Imagine a day without your smartphone, laptop, or even your smartwatch. Difficult, isn't it? Our world is virtually wrapped in an invisible web of electronics. From the moment we wake up, we're greeted by the familiar hum of technology. The morning alarm, the automatic coffee maker, the digital news updates, all are tiny threads in this intricate web. As we move through our day, electronics continue to play a pivotal role. They're in our offices, our schools, our cars, and even our pockets. They provide us with endless communication, boundless entertainment, comprehensive education, and efficient transportation. Over the years, our reliance on these devices has grown exponentially, transforming them from mere conveniences into absolute necessities. They've become an integral part of our lives, shaping our routines, our interactions, and our understanding of the world. All these devices, though vastly different, have one thing in common. They are powered by semiconductors. So what exactly are semiconductors? Well, imagine you're at a party. Conductors are those who can't stop dancing to the beat, while insulators are the wallflowers who refuse to move. Semiconductors, on the other hand, are somewhere in between. They'll get their groove on, but only when the right song comes on. In the world of physics, semiconductors are materials that have a conductivity level that falls between that of conductors, like copper and gold, and insulators, such as glass and rubber. Now let's meet the life of this party. Silicon and germanium are two commonly used semiconductor materials. These partygoers are unique because of their crystalline structure. Each atom in these materials shares its electrons with four neighbors, creating a tightly packed, regular pattern. This structure plays a pivotal role in determining their semiconductor properties. These materials, with their unique properties, form the backbone of our electronic devices. To understand semiconductors, we need to delve into the world of energy bands. Picture it like this. Energy bands are like highways for electrons, the smaller particles that zip around the nucleus of an atom. These highways have different lanes, each with its own energy level. In the world of solids, we have two main lanes, or bands, that are of particular interest, the valence band and the conduction band. These two bands are separated by a space known as the band gap. Let's start with the valence band. It's like the slow lane on our highway. Electrons in this band are bound to the atoms and move relatively slowly. They're responsible for the atoms forming bonds with each other, which is why we call it the valence band. It's all about valency, or the combining power of an atom. Next up, we have the conduction band. This is the fast lane, where electrons have enough energy to break free from their atoms and zip along at high speeds. These free electrons are the ones that carry electric current. So the conduction band is crucial when it comes to the conductivity of a material. In between these two lanes, we have the band gap. It's like a barrier that electrons need a certain amount of energy to cross. If an electron gains enough energy, it can leap from the valence band to the conduction band. The size of this band gap determines whether a material is a conductor, an insulator, or a semiconductor. Remember, in semiconductors, the band gap isn't too wide or too narrow. It's just right, allowing some electrons to make the jump and conduct electricity under the right conditions. But here's the real magic. By manipulating the band structure of semiconductors, we can control the flow of these electrons. It's the mobility of these electrons that makes semiconductors so versatile. They're the unsung heroes, the tiny particles that bring our electronic devices to life, all thanks to the magic of energy bands. Semiconductors are not all created equal. Indeed, there are two main types of semiconductors, intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic semiconductors are pure and do not contain any impurities. They are naturally occurring and have a balanced number of electrons and holes, making them neither positive nor negative. However, their conductivity is relatively low, and they aren't very practical for most electronic applications. On the other hand, we have extrinsic semiconductors. These are far more interesting. Extrinsic semiconductors are created when a pure semiconductor, like silicon or germanium, is intentionally doped with a specific impurity. By adding a small amount of impurity, we can dramatically increase the semiconductor's conductivity and control its properties. This doping process is akin to adding a pinch of salt to a bland dish. Just as the salt enhances the flavor of the food, the impurity enhances the conductivity of the semiconductor. There are two types of extrinsic semiconductors, 
N-type and P-type. N-type semiconductors are created by doping the semiconductor with an element that has more valence electrons than the semiconductor material. This results in a surplus of negatively charged electrons, hence the name N-type. P-type semiconductors, on the other hand, are created by doping the semiconductor with an element that has fewer valence electrons. This results in a surplus of positively charged holes or places where an electron could be. This is why we call them P-type. This ability to manipulate the properties of semiconductors to control their conductivity and even their charge is truly remarkable. It's like being able to change the color of a piece of cloth at will or to turn lead into gold. This ability opens up a world of possibilities, allowing us to design and create a vast array of electronic devices that power our modern world. So remember, this ability to manipulate the properties of semiconductors opens up a world of possibilities. From diodes to transistors, semiconductors are everywhere. Let's dive into the fascinating world of semiconductor devices to understand how these tiny components are the backbone of our modern electronic era. At its core, a semiconductor device is a component that uses the unique properties of semiconductor materials to perform specific functions. Consider the Humble Diode, a simple yet powerful semiconductor device. It's like a one-way street for electrons, allowing current to flow only in one direction. This property is crucial in many applications, such as converting alternating current to direct current in power supplies. Then we have transistors, the rock stars of the semiconductor world. These devices can amplify or switch electronic signals, making them essential in virtually all electronic equipment. Your smartphone, for instance, contains billions of these tiny powerhouses working together to run your favorite apps and games. Integrated circuits, or ICs, take things to a whole new level. These are complex assemblies of millions or even billions of transistors and other components, all squeezed onto a tiny piece of silicon. Thanks to ICs, we've been able to shrink the size of electronic devices while vastly increasing their capabilities. There's also a variety of specialized semiconductor devices. Think of light-emitting diodes or LEDs, which convert electrical energy into light. Or solar cells, which do the opposite, converting light into electricity. And let's not forget about sensors, which can detect everything from temperature and pressure to light and sound and convert these into electrical signals. All these devices from the simple diode to the complex IC rely on the unique properties of semiconductor materials. By carefully controlling these properties, we can design devices that perform a wide range of functions, from lighting up your room to powering your computer, from capturing solar energy to detecting a faint heartbeat. Each of these devices plays a critical role in the functioning of our electronic gadgets. Without them, our modern world would look very different. So the next time you use your smartphone or laptop, remember the tiny semiconductor devices working tirelessly inside, making it all possible. Transistors and integrated circuits have revolutionized electronics. These two components are the unsung heroes of our modern digital age. Let's delve into their world. Transistors form the backbone of most electronic devices. They're like tiny electronic switches that can either amplify a signal or turn it on and off. Picture a gate that can open and close at an astonishing speed, controlling the flow of electrons, and you've got a basic idea of how a transistor works. There are two main types of transistors, bipolar junction transistors, or BJTs, and field effect transistors, or FETs. BJTs are like a faucet, controlling the flow of electricity by adjusting the amount of current. FETs, on the other hand, function more like a valve, adjusting the flow of current by varying the width of a channel. Now imagine taking millions or even billions of these transistors and shrinking them down to fit on a tiny piece of silicon. That's essentially what an integrated circuit is. It's an entire electronic circuit miniaturized onto a small chip. The move to integrated circuits was a game changer. Before their invention, electronic devices were bulky and limited in their capabilities. With integrated circuits, we could make devices smaller, faster, and more efficient. It's the reason we can have powerful computers that fit in our pockets instead of taking up an entire room. These integrated circuits come in different types, each designed for a specific function. For example, a microprocessor, the brain of your computer, is a type of integrated circuit. 
Another type is memory chips, which store information in your devices. The invention and evolution of transistors and integrated circuits have truly revolutionized our world. From computers and smartphones to satellites and medical devices, they are everywhere, silently working behind the scenes to make our lives easier and more connected. These miniature components have made our devices smaller, faster, and more efficient. And as technology continues to advance, who knows what incredible innovations we'll see next. The possibilities are, quite literally, microscopic. Creating semiconductors is a complex and meticulous process. As we delve into this fascinating world, let's start with the very foundation, the crystal growth. Here, pure semiconductor materials, like silicon or germanium, are heated until they melt. A seed crystal is then dipped into this molten material and slowly pulled out, allowing a single crystal to form. This crystal, also known as a boule, is essentially a large-scale representation of the atomic structure of the semiconductor. Once we have our boule, it's time for wafer processing. The boule is sliced into thin, circular wafers. These wafers are then polished to achieve a flawless, mirror-like surface. It's on this surface that our intricate electronic circuits will be built. Next comes the art of lithography. This process uses a patterned mask and light to etch the circuit design onto the wafer. It's like using a stencil to create a street art masterpiece, but on a microscopic scale. Each layer of the circuit is etched one at a time, building up the design with incredible precision. But our wafer is not quite ready yet. It's time for doping, the process that defines the behavior of our semiconductor. Here, small amounts of impurity atoms are introduced into the semiconductor. This changes the semiconductor's properties, creating regions of positive p-type and negative n-type charge. These regions are what allow our semiconductor to control and direct the flow of electricity. The final steps involve testing and packaging. Each semiconductor is tested for functionality and then packaged in a protective casing. This casing not only shields the semiconductor from the environment, but also allows it to connect to the other components of our electronic devices. So, whether it's the smartphone in your pocket or the computer you're using right now, remember, each started with a single crystal, a beam of light, and a sprinkle of impurities. This process, though intricate, helps us create the powerful devices we use every day. The applications of semiconductors extend far beyond our smartphones and laptops. These tiny, versatile materials power the devices and systems that have become integral to our daily lives. Consider the computing industry, for instance. Semiconductors form the heart of microprocessors, the brains of our computers. These chips, packed with billions of transistors, perform calculations and tasks at lightning speed, enabling everything from word processing to video games. Next, let's explore telecommunications. Ever wondered how your mobile phone manages to connect you to the world? Semiconductors, of course. They're key components in the transceivers that send and receive signals, making wireless communication possible. But the reach of semiconductors doesn't stop there. They're also vital to the renewable energy sector. Solar panels, for example, use semiconductors to convert sunlight into electricity. This process, known as the photovoltaic effect, is a perfect example of semiconductors in action, turning light into usable power. And let's not forget healthcare. Semiconductors are used in a wide range of medical devices, from simple thermometers to complex MRI machines. They're even found in the microcontrollers that regulate modern pacemakers, helping to keep hearts beating steadily. In each of these applications, semiconductors are chosen for their unique properties, their ability to control electrical current, their reliability, and their durability. These qualities make them ideal for use in environments where precision and reliability are paramount. Semiconductors have also played a key role in miniaturization, allowing us to pack more power into smaller devices. This has led to the development of everything from tiny hearing aids to smartphones that fit in the palm of our hand. Looking to the future, the potential applications of semiconductors are virtually limitless. As we continue to innovate, discovering new ways to manipulate and use these fascinating materials, who knows what we might achieve? Semiconductors have truly transformed the way we live and work. Their diverse applications touch almost every aspect of our lives and their potential is only just beginning to be tapped. Semiconductors, though tiny, 
have a huge impact. They are the very heart of modern electronics, the unsung heroes behind the scenes, making our devices smarter, our communication quicker, and our world a little bit more connected. From the silicon and germanium that form their core, to the intricate process of fabrication, every step in the journey of a semiconductor is a testament to the marvels of human ingenuity. They are in our computers, our phones, our cars, and even our medical equipment, quietly empowering our lives and fueling our progress. They have revolutionized industries, from computing to telecommunications, renewable energy to healthcare. Yet, this is just the beginning. The world of semiconductors is vast, complex, and ever-evolving. There are still countless mysteries to unravel, innovations to discover, and applications to explore. As we continue to innovate and explore, who knows what the future of semiconductors holds?